Hey guys, what's going on? Will here, Flawless Exotic Creations, coming to you guys with another video. This week, um, it's going to be a video for us beginners, entry level, uh, hopefully to ease some of the pressures of ball python keeping and breeding. Uh, what's one of the topics that we want to talk about this week is... We received a message actually thanking us, um, talking about one of our kind of, it's a project we want to work Raven, figure out whether Raven is indeed chocolate or not uh, down the road, but we're not really pushing the issue on trying to really do it really, really quickly. Um, we have an albino raven um, female or pos uh, raven female that we purchased quite some time ago. And we had at the very beginning, um, nothing but issues from her. Uh, I believe I would have to check the cards and everything. I know for a fact she's been here now at least a year and a half going on probably closer closer to two years um, and she has been a problem feeder so in dealing with these problem feeders um, as a pet keeper of one or two snakes or of a lot of snakes we're out here we're down here doing some cleaning some regular weekly uh, care uh, needs and figured we would hit this topic in a video instead of typing out a long message um, the person actually asked you know what did I mean by it helps us that we have a large amount of snakes well the way my brain works as Audra says I'm super super I guess OCD I have a, a process that we go through no matter what it is I try to uh, make sure that it's the best path to the end result and that being said when it comes to these ball pythons each and every one of them are individuals um, they're gonna have their own behaviors uh, that you're gonna have to learn some of them you know will love frozen thought some of them won't take frozen thought it's some of everything when it comes to uh, these ball pythons all the way down to the space um, we started uh, let me show her off okay so this is the female that we were talking about um, she's been with us quite some time now I actually got her ID card out and she's been here almost two years uh, the thing about it is she's absolutely beautiful we love her um, this is one of Audra's favorite snakes this was one of her we need to have that uh, <laughs> ball python when we were purchasing a bunch and the thing about her she was very very uh, reluctant to eat um, we didn't want to go the route because she was already I guess uh, hatchling size according to the breeder who we won't throw out there like that um, had taken several several meals and as soon as she got here she wouldn't eat um, we would change the tub size we would offer a different you know prey whether it's mice whether it's uh, pups uh, frozen thawed fresh killed she just would not take it um, we have to share you you have to have a lot of patience when dealing with some of these issues. We have breeders that sometimes they'll skip a meal a week, two weeks, sometimes a month. Um, sometimes they just don't feel like eating. It just is what it is. So having for us, not everyone, you know, does not apply to everyone, but you can twist it to fit you and hopefully remedy an issue that you may be having when it comes to feeding. For us, it helps that we have to tend to the needs of all of our snakes in our collection. It takes the focus off of always kind of gawking and looking at your issues when you're dealing with your issue snakes, your problem feeders, and it gives them their time to adjust to the new keeper settings, whatever, you know, they left for setting and now they're getting used to the way that you may be keeping them, whether that's in the enclosure or a tub. They are getting used to it. You, you do have to remember, ball pythons, the reason they have hides and everything else is they are accustomed to small spaces. It makes them feel safe. It makes them feel secure. So if you can provide what they need, at some point they will snap out of it and get with the program. So I'm not going to hold her too, too long because I don't want to induce a food strike because again, that's why we don't we don't take any of our snakes out on road trips. We don't uh, take them with us to shows. It's just personal preference. You know, we, we respect our collection to the max and we don't want to bring problems on ourselves um, through no fault of our own. So this girl here, she's literally going on two years old, probably two years old right now, and she's 411 grams. 
she's on food right now she's eating every single week but that's now that's been for maybe the last two three months she's 411 grams let me show you the other girl okay so this girl sorry mama is two years 411 grams this girl here we hatched out here in the house a stranger girl one of our keepers beautiful girl but she's 500 grams okay and she is eight months so she's eight months it's not a different feeding schedule we feed uh, once a week and we literally we have so many different sizes of uh, weans and pups and smalls that we make sure that every snake gets the appropriate size um, and we can swap if they want a different prey item whatever it may be so we're lucky and blessed to work with our uh, rodent guide Carolina rodents uh, to be able to supply our needs but this goes to show you you have one eight month old girl and one two year old girl and the eight month old girl is bigger than the two year old girl we've had zero feeding issues with her she may have skipped one meal here or there and we've had nothing but feeding issues with this girl does that make one better than the other? Not necessarily, but that does tell you that we have to be hyper vigilant to paying attention to your collection to know which snakes are having problems as far as when it comes to feeding and hopefully try several different things out there to remedy that issue, whether that's downsizing the tub, which is was the key with her. We had to go down to an FB5 tub took her quite some time and now she's back on food and she's crushing food absolutely crushing food so sorry mama you're a little jumpy and um so that being said uh, hopefully for you and seeing this for yourselves you have to understand that they're probably not going to eat every single week don't worry about it don't stress about it even as a new breeder as a new keeper uh, make sure that all their needs are being met. Check their ambient temps, check the humidity, um, check their hot spot, the whole nine yards, and hopefully they'll snap out of it like this girl did for us. So hopefully this video was extremely helpful, at least to ease the brain, you know, from really, really going hyper OCD and worrying and stressing. We get actually quite a few messages. We've helped several people as far as get their uh, ball pythons on, on food um, that didn't even purchase from us. Uh, just from, hey, they figured they will reach out to us because, hey, we're new, they can relate, and we're gonna answer every message we receive the best, best way possible. Um, we've had these issues and now it's like, okay, if we get something that doesn't eat, we don't worry about it at all. We just skip that week and present next week and just keep we keep our ID cards with the nice little food schedule. Um, it's not too complicated. We write the name of, of the genes on the, the card. We write the date down uh, of when they take a meal. Uh, we feed on the same day every single week on a Tuesday and if it skips on the card two, three, four weeks at a time with, before you see an actual feeding, that means that that snake did not eat those weeks. We don't write down that they actually missed the meal, it's just automatically understood that they skipped those weeks. Um, this helps us monitor their uh, food behavior as far as whether they're on food, off food, and sometimes they just need their privacy. They just need to kind of sit in there and adjust and get used to the new keeper settings. Um, but it's Will, Flawless Design of Creations. Keep them comments coming. We love you guys. Subscribe, 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 and share our content, and we are out.